Well, we're here with Realtree Lamb Pro Tondo at his place here on the Kansas Missouri line. We're gonna break out the boomsticks tomorrow. It's the first time for Hunt United we're breaking out the boomsticks. We got some of our veterans and active duty military here. The bucks are rutting here in Missouri, and it ought to be a good time this weekend. I'm running camera. You know, they you know they they needed the A team to come out. Daniel said, look, the, the new millennials that are running cameras they, they can't get it done. We gotta bring some old school producers, so I'm back. <laughs> Coming out of retirement. That's right. This is a weekend that we uh, have a, somewhat of a salute to soldiers. So it started about nine years ago. We uh, hosted a couple soldiers and now it's grown to where, you know, we have five guys here this weekend and they've just become really good friends. And we have them come out and hunt on the farm. And it's just our way of saying thank you for serving the country, keeping our, you know, our, our family safe. So we have, uh, Commanders and sergeant majors and um, battalion command guys. And we'll get a couple chairs in these blinds and we'll be ready to go. So this gun actually has got a great story behind it. My father bought this gun in the 60s and uh, I didn't own a rifle. And I think I was probably two or three years in the army. And uh, dad said, I told my dad something about a rifle and he's like, I, I, I'm gonna take care of you, I'm gonna give you a rifle. And so he gave me the rifle, had an old two and a half by seven Weaver scope on it. And uh, I didn't treat it very well. You know, young kid, I, would, I used to hook it on the base of the stand, my, that old API Grand Slam, and it would swing back and forth and it was nicked all up from just being stupid. So Jason that's hunting here with us, when I went to uh, Afghanistan, we came back and then uh, did a couple of elk hunts and I left to go to Kuwait, and this was after his accident when he got paralyzed. He called my wife while I was deployed and said, hey, that 30 odd six that Dave's got, I need to bring it over to the house. Jeannie's like, okay. So she brought it over. He rejeweled it, cleaned it all off, re-blued the barrel, stripped it all down and refinished the whole thing for me. And when I came back from that deployment, I had it all sitting there for me, just a gift uh, that he did for me. So it's got some meaning, not, not only from my dad, but from one of my hunting partners, yeah. Hotty toddy. Oh my gosh almighty. It's just funny. Didn't you want to shoot your gun? I can fire away, it don't matter. I'm not hunting it. I'll... That's about how they practice at LSU. Uh, they're going to be practicing tomorrow when they play an old Miss. That's about right. First we're going to get you, there's two more behind it. <laughs> well, five, four more behind that one. Four more? I can, put five I can only get three in mine. Uh, my wife made all this cooking. So she cooked everything for us ahead of time. Out of control, right? So that we can come here and that, that bag basically just put it in the oven like, Girl, and it's good to go. And she said on the little aluminum foil directions that she was kind enough to put on there to let sit for 10 minutes. We're never gonna make 10 minutes. <laughs> up and go. I'm excited. It's cold. As I'd like to take, uh, Dave, yeah. is take a block or something in case that hay bale blind windows are too low. Yeah. And my thought process, we just take like a couple blocks. Shim up the edges. Yeah, and just bring that front up. I wondered about that, but I think in your chair you're pretty good at all. I think I'm still pretty high though compared to a regular, to a regular sitting chair, you know what I'm saying? You know, everybody always calls the the gun hunters the orange army and it's really the orange army this morning because we're going out in the orange. And we're with the army, so. Sergeant Major Tootin here is a little bit particular about his stuff, and it's typical for a Sergeant Major to be a little bit particular, um, but it only exemplified since his accident, because if someone goes and moves something or someone sets something to the side that he's, is part of it, messes up his battle rhythm, 
then it's so much more work for Jason to have to go back and find it or go, where's my handle? Somebody move this. Uh, so it's important to just stay out of the way. <laughs> season here in Missouri. We've got about uh, 30 minutes after uh, first daylight shooting light. Temperature's just about right. Figuring we're a little late in the rut. Probably just hitting that first phase of lockdown. Figuring it's going to be better late morning. Although we did see, uh, we've seen a few doves on our feet. And we've heard a few shots. This is a pretty cool honor for me to get a chance to recover Jason's deer. Took him back to camp and uh, went and got the ranger and came down here and he, he didn't go far. He just went around and around the corner and died. Wanted y'all to see him. He's, a, he's bigger than what I thought he was. Took him up. Jason is gonna be tickled to death of that deer. He was so excited in the blind after he shot. And uh, I can't wait for him to see him. So gonna get him loaded up and take him back and let Jason tell y'all all about it, but man, what a just a fantastic Missouri eight pointer and couldn't think of anything better for a more deserving guy. I mean, this other's probably about four and a half hours, about probably about five and a half years old. Got a little broken G1 right there, but uh, not bad for the uh, first 40 minutes of the season. Looking pretty good. Uh, recovery went well, and we're tagged out for season here in Missouri. We're done. Pumped up? Oh yeah. It was, uh, I don't know, two years ago I was 20 minutes after daylight. This time I think I was stretching to 40. Well, if you were listening to what daylight. I was listening to, the Orange Army had plenty of ammunition this morning, <laughs> son. This week's feature property comes from Bates County, Missouri. This 180 acres located near Warland is a true one-of-a-kind track with so much to offer. It has great deer and turkey hunting with large blocks of interconnected timber. It has significant water and stock ponds that would make for great duck hunting and great fishing. It has potential income with the large fertile fields and just a great track to get away for the weekend. So if you're looking for a great track like this 180 acres anywhere in the country, check out RealtreeUC.com today. I tell you what, for a year straight, I woke up in the middle of the night in like sweat. And Suzanne would look at me and she's like, What's wrong? And I was like, Nothing. She's like, You're dreaming about that buck again, aren't you? And I was like, she called you up. Yeah. And I was like, Yeah. And she's like, Let it go. And I was like, I can't let it go. I can't. Don't go. <laughs> Please come back. Please. <laughs> I oh. promise I'll get you this time. It's funny, uh, Command Sergeant Majors aren't known for necessarily being the nicest, politest people in the world, and Jason's no exception. But uh, we hit it off pretty well right off the bat, as long as I left his coffee alone and I didn't uh, 
talk to him before like nine in the morning or there's a there's a list of rules but it was pretty good well and like i had a general rule so i just don't want like to talk to me while i got my coffee so we deployed to afghanistan together came back from afghanistan and the first year that we came here and got to do this veterans hunt with uh with tondo was 2011 and then uh, uh jason had his accident so we spent a lot of time at that point together uh because we had he had put up with me so well, so I enjoyed spending time with him. So we were skiing up in Keystone, which we had done the previous couple of uh, spring breaks. It was a little icy and I was tired, and I started to take a hard right turn, and when I did, I lifted the uphill ski, which is a mistake, but uh, I was tired and caught an edge and lost the ski. So now I'm heading backwards towards the trees, and I knew the trees were coming. So basically I got down to try to slow myself, but I was moving too fast and there was a trail marker with a pole probably about four inches round and it caught me in the lower back and when it did it stretched me so hard around the pole that it actually broke my femur and tore my aorta which is the main artery from your heart and then I spun off that and hit a tree a little bit higher in my back because of the uh, back injury. I never lost consciousness. I was laying there and I tried to get up. Instantly I couldn't feel my legs, couldn't move. I knew I had a back injury, so I tried to stay still. Um, ski patrol got to me. There was luckily a call box right there. Ski patrol got to me, stabilized me, got me to the bottom of the hill, and then they evac'd me, and 45 minutes later from the time of the accident, to, I was on the surgery table. And the two things that saved me was I was in good shape because I was active duty at the time, so I was in really good shape, and the fact that uh, they got so quick to the, to the hospital. So for whatever reason, I'm still here. Drinking my coffee. It's uh, opening morning, uh, the 16th of November, Missouri rifle season. I sat this bind earlier today. It's on a lot of good uh, bedding areas. Uh, been excited, my friend uh, Jason shot a nice big old eight point this morning. He's pretty excited. Glad that he was able to harvest a deer. deer yet and it's probably not the best thing to do right at sunset or, but uh, I know Tondo doesn't like them coyotes he wants to get rid of them so we just shot our second coyote uh, he's also dead that's a big wide buck but I think he's only an eight. Oh, you think he's wide he's wide he's an eight though I think he's gonna go in with a let's let him count there's yeah there's a nice wide eight I think he's an eight He's wide, he's got good mass, uh, but I think an eight. He just walked into the hedgerow. I probably could have shot, but it would have been rushed and I didn't get a good look at the rack. I don't want to mess that up, but I think he's going to come out here and give us a shot where we smoke that second coyote. We're we'll watch, he'll walk up to that coyote, see him dead there, he'll smoke him in, he'll run right back in the woods, and I'm going to shoot the coyote. Hey, hey, oh, there he is. He's on Oh, yeah, he's a big, tall, eight-pointer, 
sure do. Stops, I'm gonna shoot. Stop it, stop it. I almost pulled the trigger right there. I had him, I was about to shoot, and he fell again. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, that's two, two yotes. Beautiful white yot. Nasty normal yacht and a big eight. Yeah, baby. Awesome. This 30 out six from dad still works. I swear, if that's him. What in the world? Dave just shot a kid. Ladies and gentlemen, hey, so Dave, first of all, I've never traveled to the woods with that much ammunition. Do you carry a box with you? I carry a handful of rounds. I put them in my magazine. There ain't gonna be nothing left to shoot. This dude thinks that he's in basic training learning how to shoot. Just shoot my paper. That there's no deer left on that side of the creek. He's killed all those. Been shooting all day. Oh my goodness. Whew. Look at that. Oh, nasty. Big old eight. Look at that big old crop coming off there. Oh, man. Well, I'm super excited. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's the biggest deer I ever shot. And uh, I think it. Uh, it's exciting to be able to come out here, spend time in nature. And I think honestly, a lot of a lot of military people, they come out of the army and they uh, they got they work hard and they want to relax and get do something that they enjoy. And for me, that'd be something like this land. You get out, you can exercise on it, you can walk around on it, you can put energy and time into it. It can be your mission. God give us good gift, nice big deer. Someday I'll have land to do something like this for myself too. It's the biggest deer I ever shot. Super that's excited. So I think that's the testament to land management. Over there, there's two more. Like we haven't stood here for three bucks. Good job, Bob. Thank you.